Okay, in this video I'm going to go through number 18, and that is to use the definition of the derivative to find the derivative of each function. So um, this is our limit definition. Um, so remember this is that f prime of x is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. So the way that this is going to look, f prime of x is going to equal the limit as h approaches 0 uh, of, let me try that again, so we have f of x plus h, so that's going to be, um, just that part there is going to be x plus h cubed minus 2 times x plus h plus 4 and then we're going to do um, minus and then we're going to do f of x so that's going to be x cubed minus 2x plus 4 so f of x plus h minus f of x and then all over h um, so then at this point we just need to um, simplify the top, start cancel some things out. So limit as h approaches 0. Okay, on top, when we do x plus h cubed, um, I'm gonna, you can write out x plus h three times and multiply that all together. I'm going to go ahead and, and give you what that's going to be. So that's going to be x cubed plus 3x squared h plus 3xh squared plus h cubed. And then um, I'm going to distribute my negative 2, so minus 2x minus 2h plus 4. And then distribute this negative through here, minus x cubed plus 2x minus 4 over h. All right, so some stuff's going to cancel out here. Um, the x cubes will cancel, plus 2x, minus 2x, minus 4, plus 4. Um, at that point, after you cancel all that stuff, uh, and you're very clear about that, everything that doesn't have an h needs to cancel first. Then remember you can cancel the, an h uh, from the bottom and an h with every term that you have left. So I can cancel that h, this becomes h to the first, this becomes h squared, that h is gone, and that h is gone. So we have the limit as h approaches 0 of 3x squared plus 3xh plus h squared minus 2. And now we can evaluate the limit by plugging in 0 for h, which is going to give us 3x squared minus 2. And again, now that you know how to find these using um, some shortcuts, you should have been able to look at this right away and say, I know that the answer is 3x squared minus 2. Um, and, and, and you could check your answer that way. Okay, but that's the using the definition of the derivative. All right, so B, um, again, we've got uh, definition derivative. This time our function is a little bit more complicated to deal with, but same thing. So f prime of x, uh, sorry, g prime of x, g prime of x equals the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h. So that's going to be x plus h plus the square root of x plus h. And then we're going to subtract f of x, which is uh, x plus the square root of x all over h. So that's going to equal the limit as h approaches 0 of x plus h plus the square root of x plus h minus x minus the square root of x over h. Um, now, it's not as convenient as a polynomial. We are going to get things that cancel. The x's will cancel here. Um, but, you know, it's not going to be quite as convenient because we have still left over, um, we have those square roots, right? So we have the limit as h approaches 0 of h plus the square root of x plus h minus the square root of 
x all over h. So what I'm going to do at this point in time is I'm going to multiply point. Um, what I need to actually do is multiply by the conjugate of this. And no, you don't need to include this h. So what I'm going to multiply by is the square root of x plus h plus the square root of x. Do that on top and on bottom. Um, so that's going to give us the limit as h approaches 0. Now, even though you didn't have to include the h, I still need to multiply the h by both of those things. So what I have is, is h times the square root of x plus h plus h times the square root of x. Um, and then I'm going to do the square root of x plus h times each of those. So that's going to give us um, plus x plus h when I multiply the square root of x plus h by that. And then, um, now, when we do the middle terms, so when we do conjugates, remember the middle terms will cancel out. So this plus square root of x plus h times the square root of x, and then the minus the square root of x times the square root of x plus h, those are going to cancel each other out. So I can um, skip that step. So I'm just going to then get minus, when I do the square root of x times the square root of x, that's going to give me minus x there. And then that's going to be over h times the square root of x plus h plus the square root of x. So I didn't quite need that much room. But um, at that point in time, again, more stuff's going to cancel, and we're going to be able to then cancel h's. So the x's here are gone. Um, and then notice every term on top has an h. So I can that's going to be a 1. I can cancel that h, this h, and this h with this h here. So at that point, we have the limit as h approaches 0 of um, the square root of x plus h plus the square root of x plus 1 over the square root of x plus h plus the square root of x. And now I can plug in 0 for my h's. Um, and we're going to get the square root of x plus the square root of x plus 1 over the square root of x plus the square root of x. So this is going to equal 2 square roots of x plus 1 over 2 square roots of x. And I'm actually going to divide those. So 2 root x divided by 2 root x, that's going to be 1. And then plus, I also need to divide the 1 by the 2 square root of x, so plus 1 over 2 root x. Now, I, the reason I did that is so that you can see, if you were to do the derivative of this using your shortcuts, the derivative of x is 1, and we see that here. And then if you rewrote this as x to the negative 1 half um, and used your power rule, you would end up with something equivalent to 1 over 2 root x. Okay, so a little bit more complicated there. Um, anytime that you have a square root as part of your function and you're doing this um, definition of a derivative to find that, you are going to need to multiply by the conjugate. That's going to be a necessary step in order to help you eliminate h's and then plug in um, the h for the remaining h's there.